hundred dollar fucking Bigfoot costume. When the fuck am I ever going to use this again? Oh, what? Your eyes don't deceive you. There is a Sasquatch porn. And why wouldn't there be? I've seen pornos based on aliens and fucking cartoon characters. Might as well make a porno out of a mythical beast that was only slightly less hairier than most of the porn stars of the 70s. The name of the movie is The Geek, and oh yeah, when you hear that title, you immediately think of Sasquatch fucking the Manson family. Is that really the best title they could think of? The Geek sounds like it should be a great double feature with Killer Nerd. You don't have to be an expert on the golden age of pornography to know that not only is Sasquatch a better title, but it's an amazing title! Oh goody, the movie comes to us direct from Something Weird Video. Yeah, thanks guys. You're the one I have to blame for sitting through Zero In and Scream, Satan's Children, and of course, Blood Freak. You hear that, Something Weird Video? You ruined my Thanksgiving! Okay, they must be under the impression that their logo is more fascinating than the movie, because this sure as shit is going on for a while. What is that sound? Is that aliens trying to tell me not to watch this thing? The movie is introduced to us by, hey, check it out, it's the cinema snob of the 70s. Even back then we had to watch the worst fucking movies. If you do not understand what an adult motion picture is, or if you would be offended by frank and intimate scenes, then we urge you not to view these motion pictures. Yes, if you don't know what an adult motion picture is, just ask the guy beating off next to you. I'm sure he'll explain it. If you, like many of our friends and customers, enjoy the very finest in adult motion pictures, you will find them shown weekly at the Dragon Art Theater. So if you find this film erotic, you're in luck, because next week, we're gonna show you Georgina Spelvin fucking a snake. All right, now it just looks like we're in store for vegan porn. I was wondering why this movie promised more wood than any other movie. Also, I'm not buying that this is a Bigfoot movie. You need some classic Sasquatch music thrown in there. This is where the story plays, a world on which we seldom gaze, page from the book of yesterday. Thank you, Boggy Creek, for your endless source of folksy monster music. Oh, a nice title card, by the way. I've seen the camera reflected off of a lot of things, from a car to a window, but I can't say I've ever seen the camera reflected off of a title card. I have no idea what the alternate title of this movie could have been. IMDb doesn't mention anything, and it only lists two of the actors. So I can only assume that the other actors from this movie have been missing for 30 years. And to one-up that, there's not even a director listed for this movie. Or a crew! More is known about Sasquatch than the makers of this movie. At least people have claimed to have seen Sasquatch. Any takers on the director of The Geek? God damn it. Fucking lights. Son of a fucking bitch. Oh, 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 yeah, thank God my camera automatically goes into night vision. We then get another title card telling us more about the mythical creature known as the Geek. Its grotesque form has on occasion been seen by some. Others scoff at its existence, yet all respect it. Yes, we respect it so much, we're gonna film it fucking several people. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to witness here at the theater... I'm not watching the movie in a theater, I'm watching it at home! This narration does not apply to me! Also, for a movie that's only built around showing Bigfoot experiment with doggy style, the narration is getting pretty in-depth about its backstory. You are about to see one of the strangest phenomena of our century. It is a legend come true. 
It is the legend of the mysterious and elusive animalistic type of creature. That's true. I guess you don't see many VW vans around anymore. Some scientists believe that the ancient Neanderthal man was the protector of our present civilization. Jesus Christ, ten minutes into this movie, and we have yet to see one tit! Yet we've gotten a fine history lesson on Sasquatch! Yet others insist that the Sasquatch, otherwise known as the Geek... Again with the Geek! Who calls it that anymore?! There exists its counterpart. A huge, shambling monster, covered with coarse, black, matted hair. I'm sorry, this is a 70s porn. Are you talking about Bigfoot or Harry Reams? This grim reminder stirs man to wonder. Are we really the masters of the earth that we think we are? Well, considering that it was humans and not Bigfoot that made the movie The Geek, I'm gonna say that Bigfoot is master of the earth. Now that the cast has gotten out all their luggage to pad out the narration about the difference between Bigfoot and the abominable snowman, they begin walking to their destination. And walking to their destination. And walking, and walking, and walking. Are they fucking trying to outwalk Robo War? What's going on here? The only way this could be more uninteresting is if it were 90 minutes of Matt Damon and Casey Affleck walking through a desert. Holy shit! I've never seen one of these under a microscope. It, oh, oh, sorry, it's just grass. <laughs> never mind, I thought it was something else. The cast starts to marvel about their surroundings, such as the wild stock footage! It's amazing when you can still point out the stock footage in a movie that itself looks like stock footage. Okay, I think we're done with this shot here. Let's switch to... Eh, fuck it! Zoom in and keep going! We'll knock out two shots! I know that at this point some of you might not believe me that this is a porn, but you're just gonna have to trust me. It is. What? Can't a porn give you finer tips on camping as well as fucking? We will rest the remainder of the day, and tomorrow morning, hike further into the forest in quest of our quarry. Quarry? I thought they stopped making that cereal years ago. <laughs> The narration also explains that the character's whole point in camping is to find Bigfoot, and... And we are all pledged to share and share alike. Our food and our water. Everything. Including our women. <laughs> really? Do the women know this? Oh, I see they're gathering up Bigfoot's equivalent of a butt plug. I'm sure he won't mind that. See, back in the 70s, you couldn't just go online and find Rule 34. No, no, you had to go to the forest and create it yourselves. So after the producer probably tapped on the director's shoulder to remind him that this is a skin flick, we finally get around to a scene that's about as attractive as John Holmes getting a hand job from the Rancor. Oh, perfect, I know why they're shooting this scene, so Sasquatch's dick will look more attractive in comparison. <sighs> <laughs> How would you like to have been in the sound room when the dub actors were recording their moaning? You're a little too high. Move, move down a bit. Wait, are the dub actors actually fucking in the sound booth? Because what they said does not describe what I'm looking at. We better get back before they come looking for us. Oh, don't worry about them. After what you two just did out in the open, I'm pretty sure you no longer have any friends. Mm, let's do it again later, baby. All right? All night long, baby. <laughs> okay, I like how the music got all suspenseful at the prospect of those two fucking again. Mm, let's do it again later, baby. All right? But there's other cocks and vaginas on the set, too, so we have to see them play with each other as well. Is that all I can get is a drink? Well, I've got an Italian salami. <laughs> Even the sound editor thought that was a bad joke, seeing how the audio just tried cutting out. Darling, you're wasting time. <laughs> yes, you are wasting time. Clearly the audience is here to see Bigfoot get his toes sucked, so I'm sure you're gravely disappointing them. Also, now having seen this man's cock, it's less an Italian salami and more like a mini corn dog. The fuck?
fuck is with this happy music? This sounds less like two hippies fucking, and more like Ralph the Wolf is one step closer to catching a sheep. That music is... better? This sounds like they should be fucking in an elevator. What the... Fucking lights! Motherfuck... It's not even Halloween anymore, this really sucks! Was I a good piece of ass? <laughs> yes, you were a great piece of ass. And it's almost like a guy is writing all of your dialogue. <sighs> I make fun of her dialogue, but then... this starts to happen. You mean to tell me you're a virgin? You're about as much of a virgin as the characters from Last American Virgin. Well, the closest I ever came was when my sister let me feel her breast. But, uh, I wanted to have an affair with her. I felt bad about it because she was my sister. The fuck was that? Did everything turn people on in the 70s? Well, this was the decade that gave us actual incest porn. Well, now that everyone has finished setting up camp just so they could fuck for five minutes, they pack up and leave, and start walking along the trail. God, do something. Insert some kind of musical number or something. Again, why couldn't this be like Boggy Creek, where they could just write a song around any ancillary character? Oh, hey, Travis. Hey, Mr. Snob. Uh, got your mail again by accident? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Hey, Travis Crabtree, wait a minute for me. Let's go back in the bottom, back where the fish are biting, where all the world's inviting. <sighs> These characters have been walking around for so long that I can actually hear their vaginas yawning. Phil, Val, God damn. Oh shit, something happening? Oh, it's a footprint. Just one footprint. Yeah, cause that makes sense. What's next, are they gonna find that the prints lead to tire tracks of John Lithgow's car? Now that the crew knows that Bigfoot is near, they... <laughs> I'm not buying that there were actually two cameras on the set of this film. I think they're just filming this shot in front of a giant mirror. Well, before it occurs to the characters that Sasquatch seemed to have made one footprint and then leaped ahead a half a mile, he shows up! Oh, wait, never mind, it's just Hagrid. Honestly, though, this is sadly one of the better Bigfoot costumes I've seen in a movie. Ever see Primal? Or how about Shriek of the Mutilated? Yeah, I know that in Shriek it turned out to be a man in a costume, but for the bulk of the movie, we were supposed to believe that this was real. Although it probably helps that in this movie, I don't think they're using a mask. I think they just put a fur coat around some crazy-ass homeless person and told him they'd give him five bucks and some pussy. While I think they probably gypped him on the five bucks, he did get some pussy. Walk slowly. Don't scare him, okay? I don't think he's scared. I think he's very excited to see you. Well, when you've seen E.T.'s vagina, Bigfoot's cock almost seems inevitable. Also, now that I've seen Bigfoot's cock, I can now say that Big Feet equals Big Dick is as big of a myth as Bigfoot himself. You okay? I'm showing concern right now to make up for the fact that I just stood by and watched Bigfoot have sex with you. To prove even further that Bigfoot will just fuck anything that moves, the other guys offer up their girlfriends. I guess Bigfoot's O face is just too irresistible. God, he looks like if Santa Claus turned to the dark side. The guys try their best to fend off Bigfoot, or they're trying to unzip the rest of his costume, I'm not really sure. Wait, what was that voice? Did you hear that too? That was the sound of the dub actor looking at the footage and saying, huh. Somebody I'm gonna get that filthy animal. That's right, you are gonna get this beast, because we seem to be at the halfway point in this movie, and you need to get your revenge. Uh, what the fuck? What? 
Bigfoot assaults them, gets away, and son of Sam here says, Ooh, one day I'm gonna get this beast. The end! This is the first time I've ever seen anyone in a kind of horror film just stop and say, Yeah, we'll let someone else handle it. Someone should kill this beast, but it's not gonna be us. What the fuck? That is actually kind of genius. Imagine if something like Friday the 13th Part 6 had that kind of attitude. Someone needs to stop Jason. Too bad I'm in jail. And because of these characters' nonchalant attitude to Sasquasalt, the movie is only 45 minutes long. Well, I guess that's something this movie gets right over most porno spoofs. It's not over 90 minutes. In fact, there is an edited version of this film that's only 15 minutes long. It comes as an extra on the God Monster of Indian Flats DVD. Nice to know that there is a version of this film out there that actually is just a lecture on Bigfoot. Or the geek, as they call him. And now that I think about it, I'm calling bullshit on the opening title card that claims this movie was filmed in Oregon, Washington, and Alberta, Canada. Yeah, I completely believe that this movie spread out among two countries to film people fucking in a backyard. That's... that's all I got for this piece of... That's fucking stupid. Just under that tree. I want to make love. Hey, sounds groovy. The Geek 2? I'm having a very hard time believing that this is real. Okay, so in the same world where Zombie 90 is also called Zombie 7, or Night of the Seagulls is called Zombie 8, or that Twins is called Zombie 42, Two Times the Death, no joke, IMDb says that, then sure, maybe in that alternate universe was this thing that I'm about to talk about actually called The Geek 2. That's not to say that I don't hope that the bootleg circuits start referring to it as The Geek 2, because, I mean, come on, that movie clearly needs to become a franchise. Right, Sex Squatch? Or the soon-to-probably-be-called The Geek 3? What The Geek 2 actually is, is a segment from an anthology porno film from 2002 called Perverted Stories 35. Insert joke about, but I've never seen parts 1 through 34 here. But if you look at IMDb, under alternate titles, it says The Geek 2. Perverted Stories 35 contains such shorts as Coma, which appears to be half rape, half necrophilia, Mama's Boy, which maybe has the alternate title of Taboo, The Next Generation. Then there's It Happened in the Desert, which is basically a white version of Hot Summer in the City. Which means that it's absolutely horrifying. It's for those people who watched I Spit on Your Grave and thought to themselves, gee, I could have done without the second half. But our main focus here is obviously on the Sasquatch segment titled Bigfoot, er, I'm sorry, The Geek 2. Actually, this is one of those instances where calling it The Geek 2 also could have been very appropriate. My name is Joanne Green. Really? Because according to the title card, your name is Bigfoot. I'm a scientist employed by the Oregon Wildlife Institute. Hey, we've only got 20 minutes here, so might as well get the exposition over with in the first few seconds. I have now entered the tenth day of my hunt for evidence on the existence of the creature known as Bigfoot. 
And apparently the cameraman is just hunting for ass. Aside from my discovery five days ago of what appeared to be ape-like footprints in a mud bank along the lower Sierra Nevada River. You want to take another turn at that line? You kind of stumbled over a few words there. And given that this is a voiceover, there's really no excuse as to why that couldn't have been fixed. If the footprints look like they were marked with 70s splooge, you might be onto something. Bigfoot is out here, and I will bring back to the scientific community irrefutable evidence of the existence of what could possibly be the missing link. And if I don't find him, then I'll just make a shitty reality show out of it. But I can't shake this strange feeling that I'm having something watching me. Yes, there is someone watching you. Forty-something-year-old men masturbating to this movie in their basement. I'm hoping that the beast may pick up my scent. Well, that's going to be a little awkward for Bigfoot when it comes to Conolingus. You're almost done talking. I'm getting blue balls here. I will have to be quick to get some video. Because we only got about 15 minutes worth of tape left, so we got to cut to the chase fast. As Bigfoot is historically very scared of human contact, Really? Because history has shown me that Bigfoot is not only not scared by human contact, but he is very scared of consent. Well, this is quick. She spent years looking for Bigfoot, but all she had to do was go to Lake San Chris, Illinois. <laughs> there he is! Ooh, something about being yards away from Bigfoot really makes me want to get my bear wench on. This setup is about as sexy as the setup to water power. I almost would rather watch someone get an enema and then immediately pissed on. Ah, we now see something more rare than Bigfoot. A porn star wearing a bra. Best go to sleep. If we're going by curse of Bigfoot logic here, it's two in the morning. This lady is into water sports because he's about to mark his territory. <laughs> well, that was one second of terror, followed instantly by, oh my god, I really need this thing's dick in my mouth. This is nothing new. This is exactly what Harry Reams looked like naked. By the way, in Bigfoot terms, big feet doesn't necessarily translate to big, uh, you know. The word I'm looking for is penis which is something that Harry and the Hendersons disappointingly avoided. Harry was, in every effect, a naked man roaming around the house. And he apparently had a baby dick. <coughs> you know what they say, once you go Bigfoot, you go to jail for bestiality. Also, you can hear the actor under the mask. <coughs> Well, that takes me out of it. Now I don't really think she's fucking Bigfoot. The Geek had a much better setup, by the way. At least in that movie, we got a 30-minute history on the legend of Bigfoot before the sex started. Some scientists believe that the ancient Neanderthal man was the protector of our present civilization. See? I don't know about you, but I am totally horny right now. It may look like he's taking her clothes off, but he's actually searching for the Jack Link's jerky she's hidden in her ass. And am I the only one weirded out that Bigfoot has no asshole? Is that why his breath also smells like shit? Could a French kiss in this movie also be considered a rim job? By the way, here's the rest of the dialogue. Ugh, you can stop your fake moaning. You look about as into it as this lady did. See, here's her problem. Bigfoot noticed the tramp stamp marking. The number one way to attract Sasquatch. This costume isn't terrible, really. I mean, it's better than the one from The Geek. But it does also look like the actor fell asleep in a tub of Elmer's glue and then had someone throw a bucket of pubic hair on him. Now we know that the extras on set of Battle for the Planet of the Apes had the time of their lives. And you know what this sound means. <laughs> That's right, if you can't go anal with Bigfoot, then who can you go anal with? Oh, fuck me in the ass. Please, be patient. Let Blondie here have her turn first. And again, what's with the fucking actor in the costume? Uh, uh. Am 
I would say God bless you, but I'm pretty sure that in this instance, that would be blasphemous. So they're fucking in the woods, and they got the one porn star with an allergy problem. Even she looks like she'd rather just be reading a magazine at this point. By the way, when you just hit fast forward here, her tedious moaning becomes the funniest thing about the movie. <laughs> Click. <laughs> What? You said you wanted me to make it quick, baby! <laughs> That's either a cum shot, or he just broke her in half. Oh my god, in the heat of the moment, I almost forgot why I was here. Yeah, and in the heat of the moment, I almost forgot that your character even had dialogue. And bullshit, you knew going into the woods that you wanted to fuck this thing. Pardon the black box, but I have to cover up her filthy mouth. And that's the end of the movie, so that makes two geek films where not once did they ever get the filthy animal. At least the other one teased that something was going to happen. The only thing that this one teases is that he's probably not going to call her the next day. I don't like episodes that end this quickly, because that typically means that something really stupid is about to happen. Yes. Okay, no, I'm not doing this. I saw the Spoonie fight with Snow, and if I get blood on the ground, then I am not getting my deposit back. So, you and I are going to do something much safer, my friend. Thanks for inviting me to play video games with you, Craig. Oh, don't thank me yet. The only Sasquatch-related game that I have is Undead Nightmare. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. This may be the first game where I actually feel guilty about completing the mission. Don't feel bad. Great Grandpa Nelson had no idea there were more of us left in the world. These were in the days before socialized Sasquatch media. Right, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Okay, since he's your granddad, do I give him a quick, dignified death, or do I just leave him there? I say get it over with fast. Unbeknownst to him, he has the Bigfoot polio. Either way, he'll be dead soon. Okay, this is now the second time that you suggested that this game is based on a true story, so... I'm gonna do exactly what you tell me to do. For Christ's sake! <laughs> God damn it, I still feel guilty about that. And why do you have that frozen, pissed off look on your face? I suffered a stroke three months ago. I don't remember what kissing my wife even feels like. Hey, Craig! I. Craig, I think you may have seriously jumped the shark at this point. No, no, I jumped the shark with the 50 cameos in the Caligula episode. But on the plus side, man or Bigfoot, God shines on those who come together for bad porn and video games. There's no God that made you talking, hell beast! <laughs> Fuck, Neil, there goes our deposit! 